Welcome back to the Big Story Weekend. I'm Jamie Colby. It has been almost six weeks since Connecticut groom George Allen Smith disappeared from his honeymoon cruise off the coast of Turkey. Besides a bloody handprint on the ship's balcony, investigators have had little to go on, but now reported inconsistencies in the stories of three men who were partying with Smith in the ship's casino the night he disappeared may give authorities the break they need. And joining me now to tell us about it is New York Post reporter Brad Hamilton. Brad, this case has had less information released than any other I remember. What have you been able to find out? Well, certainly it ha you're right about that. Uh, the authorities are looking into this angle uh, about these mysterious men, uh, young men, we believe 18, 19-year-old year old guys from Brooklyn, Russian guys, um, who were on the ship and were seen partying with the Smiths the night, uh, the night that he, j he disappeared. And they're looking to find out what's going on with them. We believe that it's possible that they may have had something to do with his disappearance. Why do you say that? Well, certainly the, um, the men, besides having something to do with George Smith that night, also got involved in an incident five days later. Now, this is after he's already disappeared. Uh, the ship has left Kushadasi, where they did a little investigation, and is now in Naples. And it turns out that they had some sort of uh, sexual escapade with another woman. Uh, on board and made a tape of it. The woman came forward and said she was raped and the investigators got a hold of a, 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 actually two different uh, videotapes of this uh, sexual threesome um, and uh, decided there was no rape but they kicked off the family anyway. So the, this was a call by the ship's captain. Uh, he worked with a, a local prosecutor in Naples and um, they looked into the charges and determined that the woman had not been raped. It was a consensual act but nevertheless they kicked this family off. And um, so there's another element there. Well, certainly a number of people that the police have talked to, that not only the investigators overseas, but also here in the States. Now the Connecticut DA has gotten in, or, yes, from Connecticut, correct? That's where US, they were US from. Attorney, yes. Uh -huh, yes. What is he planning to do? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, the FBI has uh, said that they are in charge of the investigation. Uh, I believe that the Turkish officials may think differently. Um, but certainly the FBI has done a lot of interviewing. And, um, you know, the, right now there's nothing for him to do other than to say, uh, we're looking into it and we believe we will get to the bottom of this matter. And one of the confusing things is because we're, they were in international waters, uh, who is really in charge of the investigation? Joining me now is maritime attorney Chuck Lipkin. Uh, Chuck, what action has the cruise line taken since George Allen Smith's disappearance? Well, that you'll have to ask the cruise line, you know, I, I don't know. But I've been handling these cases for 30 years. And I can tell you normally what they do. Uh, typically, uh, they'll take statements. They'll send over an attorney to meet the ship. And all of that is being run by the risk management. And these are the people who are trying to protect the company in the event of a lawsuit. Well, how safe are you, real... Chuck? How safe are you on a cruise uh, from something like this? My understanding is that you have said that ship crime is not uncommon. What precautions are ships taking and what should people be doing to protect themselves? Well, what, what I found through uh, lawsuits is that, that they admit to two uh, reported sexual assaults per month per ship. So to me, that's, that's a lot of sexual assaults. And that doesn't cover other crimes. Uh, what can be done? Uh, a, a number of things. I think they should have peepholes in the cabin doors. They should have uh, door chain locks. They should have cameras in the hallways so they see who is going into the passenger cabins. Many of the assaults that I've seen have occurred right in the passenger's own cabin. In this particular case, we're talking about something much worse, a dis someone who's disappeared, possibly even being murdered. What have you learned about this particular couple? Was there anyone in their past that might have wanted to do them harm? Could there have been an old boyfriend of the wife's on the ship? That was one of the, the suggestions. Well, there could have been, I suppose, although I don't see how. And they were on the ship by themselves. They didn't come along with any friends from Connecticut. Uh, these, uh, these boys, or I guess the teenagers that they met, were people they met on board. Um, so I don't think there was any kind of past boyfriend um, that we've been able to determine anyway. Um, but there is this other element now that they've also asked uh, some questions of crew members who may have been helping George back to his cabin on the night in question. He was drinking heavily, possibly arguing with his wife. Um, and so they're looking into what these crew members might know. So if there is in fact some sort of... Uh, uh, information that hasn't come out from the crew members, uh, perhaps we'll learn about that soon.
But se definitely not from the family, from what you've seen, because they might be cooperating with authorities or certainly not talking to the press. They, they, exactly. We really don't know if they're cooperating or if they are, what kind of information they may be giving to the authorities. The authorities aren't talking about it in the families, both sides, you know, George Smith's family as well as Jennifer's family. They've said nothing. Um, in fact, I was commenting the other day that not one family member from either side has been has been quoted in any press reports or television uh, broadcasts. Now you've got more information than anybody that I've seen, and I appreciate you bringing it to us. Pat, let's bring you in on this. You know, you're, they're at sea, they're in international waters, there's a bloody handprint and not much else. How do you investigate a crime like that? Well, the, fir the first thing, uh, Paige, um, I'm sorry, Jamie, is that um, I would want to speak to the wife, because here's a lady who got up in the morning and said she didn't notice anything was amiss and jumped out to the gym. I've done some cruises. And uh, those rooms are shoeboxes. I mean, you notice if a bracelet was missing. Supposedly the husband wasn't there. So, I mean, let's start with that. I mean, other than that, it's, uh, it's really uh, an interesting who done it. It comes down to eyewitness and earwitness accounts. There was an earwitness account of arguing on the balcony. It's an earwitness account of loud thuds in the room. All this was consistent later with forensic evidence that was developed and observed and, you know, um, brought into evidence at this time. But... Those 19-year-old Russian youths from Brooklyn have to be very closely interrogated. They have to, in some way, at some point, perhaps, be turned against each other with a misrepresentation of the facts, which is perfectly legal and done all the time. And this way, they can eventually get a chink in their armor, can break it out, and that's how it would start. And that would be backed up by some of the accounts that came to play already. And then the, the whole wife statement and perhaps her involvement, if any, or her lack of uh, candor mm -hmm. in relative to the facts would have to certainly be plugged in. Well, Chuck, let me ask you a question in terms of the law. Who is entitled to question these uh, passengers, these young men that may know something? Is it the American authorities or only the Turkish authorities? Well, you have concurrent jurisdiction. You look, first, you look to the flag of the vessel, which in this case is Bahamian. So they, they have uh, jurisdiction. FBI has jurisdiction over crimes by or against U.S. Uh, citizens or residents. Then you look to the waters that the ship is in. If the ship is in Greek waters or Turkish waters, then, uh, then those governments uh, would, would have jurisdiction. But, you know, I wanted to, to add something. I, I've handled hundreds of cases against the cruise lines, and uh, this case fits a very typical pattern of where uh, uh, people are drugged with roofies, uh, their sexual assaults occur. It happens right in their cabins, and uh, and and ultimately there are no prosecutions. I mean, I learned uh, in one lawsuit. I, I got some statistics from one cruise line that out of 173 reported sexual assaults, there were zero prosecutions. So I think this one is heading heading down that same path. But if this is a typical profile, something that you've seen on cruise lines, then who typically is responsible? Is it an employee of the ship, another guest? It used to be employees of the ship. The um, studies have been done by the cruise line industry where, where they learn that the crew members realize that they can rape passengers and that there are no consequences except perhaps they're fired. That's the only consequence to the crew members. And now in the last few years, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, assaults where passengers are assaulting other passengers. And I believe now the passengers have learned that they too can get away with these sexual assaults and nothing really happens to them. It's really shocking. All right, and in this particular case now, the investigation certainly moving forward, although not a lot of information coming from the family, now the Connecticut uh, prosecutor, the DA, has gotten involved and will certainly continue to follow this case. It is a mystery uh, in the Mediterranean. Brad, Chuck, Pat, thank you to all of you for bringing us more information on it. Coming up, a guilty plea.